Hello, 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 and welcome back, my friends from the internet. Before we hop into this episode, I have a few things to say. First of all, welcome to the Reddit Asks Us podcast, uh, where we read and react to comments from Ask Reddit. I am your host, Luke Dick. Remember, if you're watching on YouTube, make sure to like, make sure to comment, and subscribe. If you're listening on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, wherever else you get your podcasts, make sure to leave us a rating, and also please leave us a review. Uh, You can find the full uncut versions of the show uh, where there's extra bonus stories, comments, reactions on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and wherever else you get your podcasts. However, today... Uh, I will be releasing an audio-only episode, and the reason for this is because I am just wiped. I'm tired. I went uh, went back recently uh, to go visit family back home, and it was a lot of driving, (laughs) Uh, a lot of flying, and a lot of driving, and a lot of traveling, and I was just really tired the whole time, and... and, uh, then I, it just, the week passed by so, so fast, and um, then I came right back, and I was working full days, you know, I had a couple, um, you know, I had an 11-hour day that I had to work, a couple eight-hour days, and um, it was just, yeah, I was, I'm just wiped, you know, so uh, I, I just really didn't have the energy to be able to record the whole video and edit down a a YouTube version. So I hope that I can receive some forgiveness for that. But I will still obviously come at y'all with a regularly scheduled episode. And you know, it's it's not the biggest deal in the world, I don't think, just because the audience uh, is a little bit more engaged on the uh, podcast. audio platforms anyways so shout out to all my uh listeners on spotify i want to also thank every every single person who's been rating the show on spotify because that has been uh wonderful to see the ratings go up on that on that show and i'm I'm glad that you you guys are so generous in in giving me um really really high ratings and i couldn't be more thankful for that because you know the podcasting thing is i've been doing it for a long time and it's really now starting to you know, gain a little bit of traction with some people, and I'm really glad that uh, every those people who it's gaining traction with are really enjoying the show. So I, I couldn't thank you guys more uh, for doing that. Um, so anyways, let's get right into this uh, week's episode. So this week's episode is, what is your strongest opinion that's not political, religious, or moral? And this one I kind of chose just because it's every, every when it whenever it comes to like an opinion that's political religious or moral i mean it's it's really hard not to have an moral opinion because i feel like a lot of opinions come back to some extent of morality but especially when it comes to political things maybe not as so much religious because i don't know religion's getting the boot man religion is really not i mean <laughs> i know there are a lot of religious people out there and i i know that if you're listening to this and you happen to be religious then um you know, I don't, I don't mean to discriminate against y'all. I personally don't dis- subscribe to any, any sort of religion, but, um, I, I feel like those opinions can tend to just, we're, we're, we're in so much divisiveness already. It's, it'd be nice to find some of those opinions that we can all can maybe sort of agree on, but let's, let's check it out. So the first one here comes from Realistic Bastard. People should learn that saying, I don't know, is a perfectly acceptable thing to say and very often the most accurate. We have a reply from ncgrits01. Yes, best doctor I ever had gave this answer to a question I had, then took me across the hall to her office where she pulled off a book from the shelf and literally looked it up. This is this is like, I love this one, guys. I love this one because I feel like for the longest time I had this like obsession with if somebody asked me literally anything, I had to have like a pre-prepared, already cooked up, fried, deep fried, chicken fried, you know, dumpling answer for them, you know, served on a platter or on, on that silver platter. Platter, And I feel like I realized like over time that it's our, it's our like, it's our intuition as humans to want to like know things. Like we, we have an ambition to want to know things and spread knowledge, gain knowledge and acquire knowledge. And uh, like his knowledge is power, really, it truly is. And it, and it does get it does get us and it makes our lives easier when we have certain knowledge. It could also make our lives harder, though, as well, 
um, depending on how you view your own knowledge and how and your perspective on the knowledge that you have. But I feel like I had to really realize after a while that there, there, you're never going to know enough. Like you're, there's no such thing as knowing enough or, and this goes with everything. There's no, there's no such thing as having enough. You know, you're, there's, you're never going to be at a point in knowledge where, where you know enough and then you're gonna be like, oh, I'm finally satisfied. I know absolutely everything there is to know. Like <laughs> it just doesn't happen. That's not how life works. That's not how, that's not how the human mind operates. Right. So ignorance is actually a, an important tool, right? Because from ignorance, you can and, and self-admitted ignorance and self-reflected ignorance, you can actually learn a lot, you know, because you, you, I don't know why this was, this is just such a problem for me for so long. I, people would just like, I would just have this, just this insatiable desire to, to just have to have the knowledge and have to know everything. And that kind of, kind of made me seem like a big know-it-all. You know what I mean? And I was, I've been told, I've been called that before. And it makes, it makes you annoying to be around because you're the, you're the guy, you're the well actually guy. You know what I mean? <laughs> you're the type of person to be like, well, actually, and no one likes that guy. No one wants to be around the well actually person. You know, you just want to be around somebody uh, uh, like who's who if they don't know they're just gonna admit that they don't know and I feel like I've been actively trying to get better at that aspect of my life is this you know admitting to people that when I don't know something I'm just like you know what that's a really good question I don't know and especially when it comes to perspectives of people that that I don't have personal experience with you know like when it comes to like the experience of a person who's okay because like and I, I don't know if you guys can tell, but I'm like a straight white male, right? Or, or what people would, what people would categorize, I guess, in their mind as like a straight white male, right? So I feel like for the longest time, I was so ignorant to the experiences of people who are not in my position because I really haven't, especially growing up in a country like Canada, like I, ha I really haven't experienced a, a whole lot of like discrimination or, or things like that in my life based on like, or, or different tr or differential treatment based on the fact that I'm like, you know, m like not a woman or not, uh, I know my, my skin isn't a different color. And when you, when you aren't subjected to those, to those life experiences, like you, you have so much ignorance around, around what those experiences are like. And I feel like I was for a long time, I was so unaware and because I was unaware, I was unempathetic, not, not, not necessarily purposefully unempathetic, but it was because of my lack of understanding and my lack of reflection that I, you know, didn't, I didn't choose to give, um, enough time in my own life to be able to figure out and empathize and listen to other people and be like, you know, like when, uh, when people would say something about, you know, about a certain topic about, you know, how experience is for women, you know, oftentimes, like, I think I would just, you know, I wouldn't understand, you know, and, and but I would claim to know these sorts of things around the topic, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't really understand the, the, the sort of reality behind the issues until I actually stopped and asked myself, well, why don't I ask women? Why don't I ask the women who I know in my life and see what kind of answers they give me? And instead of being able to, you know, feeling like I knew the answer to some of these questions, uh, I actually went out and asked people and, and asked their for their perspective. And I think that I personally got so much of a different perspective uh, and different understanding when people actually told me about their experiences. And that was able to like kind of change my, my uh, thinking around it. But anyways, I've been on a long rant here. But point point is, is that saying I don't know is actually like really powerful because, you know, you can actually, you can actually learn because people especially if you're in front of a knowledgeable person who doesn't like a knowledgeable person who does know the information, you know, you can actually learn something because they'll teach you about it. Um, next one comes from four by 49ers. It's much more polite to be predictable on the road or it's much more, it's much more important to be predictable on the road than polite when it is your turn. Go, man, this is, this is a big, this is a big thing, man. People, uh, this frustrates me, especially like in the, in the city that I live, like there is a lot, there's a lot of, uh, and I'm like one of these people, there's a lot of newcomers to this city that I live in. I live in Halifax, Nova Scotia, and it's like one of the fastest growing cities in Canada. And the problem is, is the geographical location is quite a small area. Like Halifax is a really small, tight, 
sort of geographical area, but there's a lot of people. And so there, you always run into new drivers all the time. And while I think I've adjusted well to driving out here, just the sheer amount of people that drive on these on these roads, man, you just run into like the worst drivers. And I, I, I hella agree with this. It's like, don't, don't, don't be, don't try to be nice on the road, okay? Try to be somebody who I can be like, okay, they're just gonna go, you know? Being nice on the road, it, it just, like, I can't see you. I can't see inside your car from like, from that, like, that far away across the intersection. I can't see you. I can't see what you're dealing with. People will be, like, waving at me, and I'm like, I I literally can't see you. I, like, I, 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 go. Just go. That is, oh, my God. Driving problems, everybody. Driving problems are fucking annoying. This next one comes from Bubba Jeebus. Advertisements should never, under any circumstances, be more than 30 seconds long. To be honest, guys, I, I don't even, I don't get the point of advertisements. I really don't. Like, do they work? Who is your, who is your target audience? Annoyed people? Like, I, I seriously just, whenever advertisements come on, especially because nowadays, like, like everybody watches so much YouTube, you know, and, and, and YouTube is just one of those platforms now that, you know, everybody, it, it is so mainstream that that people are are constantly using it all the time and people flock to it but the amount of advertising that's on YouTube is like i i seriously can't believe that people would 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 watch an advertisement on YouTube and genuinely be like oh this is this is something i i am interested in or want to watch and you know what's the worst are those advertisements where it's like a it's like a a YouTube channel's YouTube video as an advertisement. That's you're literally telling me as a YouTube channel, don't watch my content. <laughs> you're actively getting people engaged into disliking your content. Nobody wants to see a YouTube video as a fucking advertisement. Like no one wants to see advertisements at all because it's just so we've been I think uh, I think maybe at a, at one point in time they actually tried in advertisements. Like, why why are the best advertisements all from like the 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 early two thousands? You know what I mean? And like and like those late nineties commercials, bro. When I wake up in the morning, I'm still asleep. No, I really don't. I want no toast. I want no water, no tea, no cereal. Give me a yop, a drink, I'm wanting fuzz. Oh, give me up, me mama so yop. Me mama give me up, me mama when the morning come. Give me up, me mama, yop, me mama, yop for when the morning come. Like, come on, bro. These these are the goaded advertisements. Like, all the old Doritos commercials and everything, like, because... Ba like I feel like back then like they just they they understood like nobody wants to watch this like no one's no one's gonna pay attention to our commercial so why don't we just not make a commercial and make like a funny skit instead but nowadays it's like everything is so oversaturated like the humor is so not funny like like companies I, I and this is the this is the thing that frustrates me too is that I, I think companies for for in large part have have like, like for the example, like the Yelp commercial I just sang, like, I feel like nowadays, if you tried to like make that commercial, people would see that as like, I don't know, a cult cultural appropriation or something like that. And, and maybe it is, maybe it isn't, but companies are, are, do not want to step on that line. You know what I mean? Companies don't want to, want to be at all uh, politically incorrect. So their, their advertisements have just gotten so dry and boring and completely unfunny. Like, uh, like there's this, okay, there's this one advertisement. Maybe you guys have seen it, but it's it's that VRBO advertisement. And it's, it, it's the dude singing in like the Kermit voice. He's like, I am right where I belong. Like, Oh, I cringe so I bet I bet if you guys have heard this commercial, you just cringed in your fucking pants when I just sang that. Like that is that shit is so annoying. And it's like they're making it annoying on purpose. But it's like you want this to be annoying so it's going to stick in my head, but it only associates your company with the fact that that song is so fucking annoying. Like <laughs> <laughs> it's so it's so backwards and even the Super Bowl commercial oh my god uh one of my buddies really loves Larry David 
and um, <laughs> we we all okay. I know I know I'm on Reddit, so I might be preaching to the wrong choir. But we are not fans of cryptocurrency. Like we're just you know, and NFTs and all that shit is just such a big scam and. Larry David, like, and he's a huge fan of Larry David, and Larry David did, like, a crypto commercial during the Super Bowl, and it was just so, like, it was, it was really, he was really upset, like, he was fucking pissed off, he's like, no, why is everything I like ruined, but, uh, but aside from that, even I'm watching this commercial, and I'm like, this is just so blatantly obvious that Larry David was just offered a shit ton of money for doing some like fucking crypto commercial that 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 that's why he did it. And it's not there's no there, how do you how do you make a crypto commercial creative and funny? Like you can't. It doesn't exist. It's not. Like like the only way you could possibly make a crypto commercial creative and funny is if you made fun of crypto, which is like what they don't want to do. You know what I mean? Like you have to make fun of like NFT bros and all this shit, but but it's funny because that shit is funny because a lot of the shit is a fucking scam. <laughs> like like do- buying into like all these stupid coins that 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 don't have any value or or anything like that. The reason why crypto can be funny is for the sake of uh, that crypto in large part has been associated with a lot of fucking scamming and a lot of people who are bad. So, so you can't like, you can't spin that. Like, oh my God, oh, the advertising today has just gotten like, I used to not mind advertising, but like, just because they would try to make it funny. But nowadays, everything is just so oversaturated. Companies don't want to try and even, even try to be funny because everything is all about, you know, be making sure you're politically correct and inclusive. And it's like, not that that isn't important, but, but, and it's not that you have to offend people with your jokes. It's that, it's that people are, are too scared to even put humor into anything because humor is like this dangerous sort of thing nowadays that, because making fun of something is in general, like now, like discriminatory, which is just not true. Like I bet the most sensitive people on this planet make jokes that are, that are, that are, uh, you know, that would be seen as offensive to some people. You know what I mean? Like you, you're never going to be, you're never going to be a perfect saint. You're never going to be, you're never, and that's why you shouldn't even try. Like, you know, when I'm doing this podcast, like I bet you could go back and listen to podcasts where I've said some questionable things, but that's the thing is that as long as I'm willing to o- open up and reflect about that sort of thing, then it doesn't, it doesn't really matter. Like I'm, I'm not trying to actively be discriminatory against people or, or hurt people's feelings, but what else the fuck am I supposed to make fun of? Like, like, you know what I mean? I have to, I have to make fun of stuff and I make fun of people and, and, and how people are because people are funny. People, people are fucking hilarious because of what we do. And, and the fact that we are imperfect beings, but at the same time, like just because you're, you know, you can still be funny without being, you know, discriminatory and and rude and disrespectful to people that's a whole different story and there's people all over the all over the spectrum of of different people that you meet on on and whatever political beliefs they might have or whatever uh whatever they might believe who are still gonna eventually offend somebody with something of what they say so it doesn't exist all right we need to we need to get back on the real humor train this next one comes from Kaleno0824. Old people need to start playing some video games. I work as a nurse and all I see is elderly the is the elderly wasting away in bed with nothing to do. They don't use their brain much when they sit in the hospital bed or skilled facilities bed. Seriously, get a hobby. Slow that cognitive decline. Uh, reply from Rusty Cougar Mama. My dad is 74 and a year ago... I bought I brought my HTC Vive and a computer over to my parents' place and he tried it. He was instantly hooked. He'd spent hours playing Air Car on Steam, which is just a free tech demo where you drive around a flying car in a Blade Runner esque setting. For his birthday this year, my brother and I bought him a Quest 2, and now he plays Medal of Honor all the time and and calls me up every day to tell me the progress he's made. It's amazing. Also, my dad is slash was not a gamer beforehand couple things here first thing is i think a lot of old people have have like uh 
distaste for video games because of the propaganda that they've been fed about it. Like, I feel like as the old, as older and older as you get, the more and more that that like you know the, those video game sorts of propaganda starts to get to you, and 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 it starts to be like, oh, video games rot your brain and all this sort of thing. And it's like, it's just it's just not true. It's it's important to have a healthy like relationship with whatever video games that you're playing, but at the end of the day, like they don't they don't rot your brain. Actually, there's been a decent amount of um, at least at, at least that I'm personally aware of at this current time um, evidence that shows that video games are good for your brain because it's good for strategizing um, and recognizing and pattern recognition. Uh, so they can actually be healthy for your brain. I mean, it depends on what games you play and and uh, and you know how often you play them because I'm sure that you shouldn't be you know playing or doing anything too much because that can be unhealthy but but yeah like I don't see I don't see the problem like um I literally just bought the other day like I don't really play video games just because I don't really have a whole lot of interest but I literally just bought an Xbox controller the other to play other, the other day to play 2K mobile on my phone and I've just been gaming one day I spent like all the entire day just gaming 2K mobile and and it's fun because it feels like I'm playing basketball <laughs> but I'm literally just playing on my phone um, another thing, uh, with, with the old people playing video games is like, yo, I, I seriously think that, that, that is actually like a, a very good idea because it can, it can help keep them focused, right? Like, like the, all the, all the, all the games that, that, that they, that they grew up playing are games you need people for. You know what I mean? Like who wants to play, who really wants to play day in and day out chess against themselves? You know what I'm saying? Like, like all the like cards, like you need, you need to, like, you need to, you need, you need people to play all those games, right? They're, they're, they're made for groups of people, but old people, old people are in a bed, man. Like they don't, they don't have, they don't have all these other people. Great way for old people to meet friends, man, throw them in the gaming chat. Like it can't be that hard. It literally can't be that hard to teach someone who's older how to play a video game. I'm, I, I refuse to like my grandma got an iPad, like five, six years ago. And when she first got it, she was so confused. She literally just tinkered around with it. And now she, that's, that's all she does. She spends the entire day just playing on or and doing things on her iPad. So I guarantee like, especially because men, when you're older, like you just have such difficulty doing like more tactile, practical, physical tasks. Right. But when, like you, anyone can really, no matter how old you are, kind of like hit buttons on a gaming controller. Cause it's not like, like my grandpa, for example, like that guy, is like a he likes some to you know do things with mechanisms like he was a mechanic like he but that shit gets so much harder as you get older because you just don't have as much you know uh dexterity with with your with your hands and it's hard to fix things uh when you especially when you can't see as well whereas like a controller is a little bit more laid out you know it's less complex um as 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 contrary as that might sound I like at least to me it feels less complex um, because there's only so many buttons and there's only so many things that you can do but um, let's get these old people on Fortnite. like I'm trying to hear some like ratio 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 you know I'm trying to hear clip that from my grandpa you know what I'm saying like we need to we need to get these old fuckers playing playing some Grand Theft Auto like I'd love to hear an 80 year old in the chat being like suck my fucking dick bro like I fucking just roasted your ass like I in in this gang battle like I'm trying to see I'm trying to see these old people on games that's gonna make me happy like I'm, I'm trying to see I'm trying to see someone who's like 80 years old actually this is so I've seen clips on Instagram of like old people pl like using using VR and just running into shit <laughs> it's like it's not it's not it's not that real we, it's not that real. We need to, we need to dial it back. It's okay. This is, this is, this is a virtual reality. So be careful. You don't want to run into the wall. <laughs> also be like the most, be like the funniest thing to like go into my, like if my grandpa was at like a old folks home or something and I like go into his room, like knocking the door. Hey, Grandpa, how are you doing? He's like, shut the fuck up! Shut the fuck up! I'm about to get a fucking W. I'm about to get this dub. Shut the fuck up. Fucking sniped him! Clip that motherfucker! Victory Royale in your fucking face, bitch! Yeah, how does that fucking feel? You fucking bitch? Yeah, I just whooped your ass. I'm 85. Fucking loser. Oh, uh... 
I see you're busy, Grandpa. No, it's fine. I just fucking destroyed this kid. Yeah, yeah. Go cry. Go cry. Yeah, I'm trying to. I'm trying to hear that from all the grandpas out there. This next one comes from Sleepy Mermaid. Most TV shows don't need as many seasons as they think they do. Quit while you're ahead and stop ruining perfectly good shows by stuffing them with with garbage so you can make more money. Same goes with movies and sequels. Yo. This is literally The Walking Dead and the Mar entire Marvel franchise. I am like, I, I don't know if I'm really motivated to see another Marvel movie again. This is my personal opinion. But, uh, and I, and like my friends know this is a very strong opinion that I have. Doctor Strange, Multiverse of Madness was one of the worst movies. I'm not even saying Marvel movies. I'm saying movies in general that I've ever seen. It was so, so terrible. The plot line was just so uninteresting. It was just, it had the, the pacing was weird. The, oh, there was so much unnecessarily scary dialogue. And it was frustrating because the trailers looked so good. The trailers made it look like it was going to be an actual, actually good movie. But no, it was hella underwhelming. Like, excuse me. I was just, I was extremely disappointed. And this is The Walking Dead too. This is what happened. Like, I feel like this is why, this is why Breaking Bad and, and Better Call Saul and these shows are so good because they don't drag on. They have an end in sight. And shows that haven't, like, maybe some of it, like, I don't, I don't want to be necessarily too critical because, you know, these are people at the end of the day, right, that who are writing the show. And I feel like maybe for a show like The Walking Dead, like, there are so many it comics of The Walking Dead, issues of comics and books and things like this. But the problem is, is that a show is not like a comic, like a, t a TV show is not is is just not like co comic books have issues and have even stories and different stories embedded within the comic and within a single comic book, but TV shows don't work like that. P TV shows need a overarching storyline that has to come to an end. Like it, it's it's a uh, oftentimes TV shows take place within just one general universe. You know, whereas comic books can take place within multiple universes and and can continuations from different stories and other timelines, whereas it's just you can't do that in a TV show because there, there's literally not enough time. And that's not how TV shows and structures have traditionally worked. And when anyone's tried to do it differently, it just it it just doesn't work like The, the Walking Dead has just gotten it was so good for the first couple seasons and then after it just got so repetitive and so boring because it just they just dragged out the story but then you look at a show like breaking bad and it's like they, that show only has five seasons like some i'm I, sometimes i'll talk to people about breaking bad and i'll be like yeah the show literally only has five seasons people will be like wait what for real and i'm like yeah because they knew when to stop it's just it, they knew they knew that we had to take the story somewhere and we have to, we have to do something. There must be a conclusion. And whether you, that you like the ending or not, it doesn't matter because there's still an ending. The show still came to an end, which is what every good story needs. I'm pretty sure the walking dead is still fucking on. Like why, why? And the same thing with Marvel, man. And a lot of it, I also think has to do with the, with the money structure, because once, once, the Hollywood sort of, um, uh, uh, what do I say? What is the word I'm looking for? The, the Hollywood, uh, like the, 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 the business level, you know, because the writing is the creative level, right? And, and then, then there's the, the executive production level where that's where a lot of the funding and the money is coming from is this, the studios, right? And the, and the studio aspect of it and the, the marketability aspect of, of movies and shows. And, and, as time has gone on, I, I, I feel like a lot of these companies have realized that it's, huh, I think they think that people just want as much content as they can consume. So they're really skipping a lot of steps when it comes to creating actually good and worthwhile shows. Like I'm thinking of so much right now. I'm thinking of a show like Moon Knight advertised to be this really great show. It was mid. It just wasn't. It's missing that that 
captivating aspect. It's missing it's missing the reason why you watch the show. You know what I mean? It's missing that that central core piece of what makes the show really good and interesting to watch. And uh same thing, I just recently saw the the new Buzz Lightyear movie and it's like there it's it's there the jokes are so surface level and so unfunny and it's like how how can a studio go from making a move a movie like toy story to producing a movie like buzz lightyear a show that a movie that could have been so good but it was just bleh it was just like especially when they came on the first like little scene there and they say that that um this the the movie that we're watching Buzz Lightyear is supposed to be the movie that Andy watched that make that made him like Buzz Lightyear so much but it's like it's missing so much it's missing it's missing the the epicness the 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 what's on the line stuff you know what i mean it's 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 missing the reason why the movie matters and instead it's just this like really dry story with just if an odd quirky supposed to be f- surface level kid funny lines like i would do i watched it with my little cousins they probably didn't they probably laughed maybe once during the whole thing like oh. this episode is is quite a bit different sorry folks for going on these long ass rants but look, look at this reply here from billy bob jimmy joe anyway here is fast and furious 20 reply from duck sauce 749 Paul Walker silhouette watches proudly as his great grandson drives by in a Lamborghini Scion X1000 to save the world with superior driving maneuvers and fucking is is ejected into space while stopping a a a satellite laser that was created by the Martians who we didn't know existed but now somehow exist and have rose from the dead but also they have other friends from other planets and now they're going to join the fun and make this giant epic earth battle furious 75 of volume 50 like like it's just so dumb so overplayed and so dumb like we need to bring back real stories people and this is this is why money ruins things man money ruins everything it makes things cheaper it makes things worse you know, money is the, is the, is not the antidote to anything. Money makes shit fucking terrible. <laughs> this, uh, and this is the last one I'll do today here for you folks. A little bit, a lot of ranting on this episode, but, uh, I don't know. I had a lot on my mind, folks. This next one comes from Mojo 88 forever. Radio ads that have honking horns and sirens should be illegal as should billboards. The only reason why I thought of this, and this is actually like very true, but uh, it reminded me of, uh, so I think this was in the 50s. Uh, There was the radio show, um, what was it called? The, uh, so it reminded me of the, of the radio show uh, that had, this happened in the 50s and it was the War of Worlds. And it was, it was a radio, um, uh, like advertisement or something for the war of worlds movie i think that was coming out but they designed it as as a radio it, it was supposed to be this sort of like it's a radio ad that sounds like a radio transmission of something real and so literally over the radio they were they were transmitting it as if it was real and they were saying the martians have landed on the planet they've destroyed the white house and everything in Washington is burning or something, something to that effect. Like they were, it was, and people, people literally freaked out because it's not like you could see it on TV knowing it's satire. Like it was the radio, <laughs> like they're, they're, they're giving off this as like, it's a legit radio announcement. So imagine if you're just like flipping through radio channels, you don't see, you don't hear the beginning of this. You can't see anything. And all you hear is Washington is burning in flames because of an alien invasion. Like, people were legitimately freaking out, and so the stations had to do this whole re, like, um, uh, recap thing, and, and had to do this whole, like, apologizing to everybody, because there uh, the were literal people, like, a lot of people who actually thought the world was being invaded by Martians, so, uh, there you go, and, and, uh, I guess now we know that, uh, there isn't even any life on Mars, so, uh, the, the chances of that happening, I'd say, are rather slim. Rather slim. Okay, so 
Thank you, folks, for listening to my long rants today uh, on the podcast and for this audio episode only. Um, I'll be back next week uh, with, again, on, with a video episode. But I just want to thank every single one of y'all for tuning in to this episode uh, of the Reddit Asks Us podcast and Reddit Asks Us as the show. Uh, remember, it's the show where we read and react to comments from Ask Reddit, r slash Ask Reddit. I am your host, Luke Dick. Remember, if you're watching on YouTube, make sure to like, make sure to comment, and to subscribe. If you're listening on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, wherever else you get your podcasts, make sure to leave us a rating, and also please leave us a review. You can find full, uncut versions of the show and bonus stories, uh, comments, and reactions from myself uh, on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and all the podcasting platforms. I love each and every single one of my friends, my beautiful friends from the internet. I love y'all. Peace out and see y'all next week.